Many people have asked why the title boardroom dancing. For South Africans of many generations, um, these have marched and demonstrated and toy toyed on the streets for our freedoms. However, the nature of a boardroom is that fewer people get to know or see the type of dance or protest that takes place within that room. Because it's confidential by nature, often five pages of minutes is often the evidence or record of what comes out of a four to six hour or longer board, board meeting. So understandably, many who are not privy to such going ons would be suspicious of such meetings. As black people operating within those environments, those not inside would often wonder, how could such a decision be made when so-and-so was there? Not fully appreciating the fact that there was a big song and dance happening inside there before that decision was made. In the 80s and 90s, when we got inside those boardrooms, we had to first observe and listen intently before venturing into the thick of things. To me, that's where the boardroom dancing analogy comes in. What is the dance currently at play? Questions we often had to ask ourselves were and still are, what's the best way to join or disrupt that dance? Who are the leaders and followers in this dance? Can you even join this particular dance or strategically lead another dance at an appropriate time? Who else around the table will join you if you did that? All these are questions that you continuously ask yourself and plan for before and during each meeting. And so what happens if you are not in the inner circle? You may ask. So you have to disrupt the flow and very soon people realize that they must find a way to include you. Once you are inside, don't forget your basic foundational dance, which is the toy toy and the activism. <laughs> and your transformational agenda. Because as black people and as women, we do know that we have been in these positions because of the transformational mandate, which is implicit in what we bring into the boardroom.